John. Thank you all very much for kindly coming and taking part in this evening's program. Our focus is Krishna. Because Krishna is everything. When we say Krishna, Krishna means everything and includes everything. Uh, Krishna and his energies. As the sun and the sunshine are all pervasive, Krishna and his energies of different kinds are uh, everywhere. The earth, water, fire, air, ether, and subtly mind, intelligence, and ego are his material energies, the inferior energy, and the spirit soul is his superior energy, uh, the living being. Ajiva Bhuta Mahabaho Yedam Taryate Jagat. We have no business in the material world, but having come here, we're struggling with the uh, material uh, body, material energy. Manasthasthan uh, Indriyani Prakritisthani Karshati. Struggling with the mind and senses. Hmm? So this struggle is going on and going on but it can stop as soon as we become Krishna conscious, as soon as we revive our original position uh, that I'm servant of Krishna. Ishra Parama Krishna. He's the supreme controller. We're tiny little controllers. We control some something. But Krishna is the ultimate controller. Uh, Sarve Sheshvara. Uh, he is the controller of the controllers and the controller of the controller of the controllers. Uh, all control belongs to Krishna. Ishra Parama. Uh, he controls everyone and no one controls him. And Satchidananda Vigraha, his body is not like our temporary material body. Our body is temporary. Uh, it's has no consciousness of its own and it's subject to so many miseries. Every inch of the body can make us miserable one way or another. But Krishna's body is uh, and Vigraha. It's eternal. It's blissful by its very nature. Uh, and uh, it's pure consciousness. Uh, in us there's a difference between the body and the self. The self is conscious and the body is mechanical. But Krishna, body and soul are the same. His form is completely transcendental. He has no origin, anadi, uh, because he's the original. Uh, Adi and Govinda, he's the source of pleasure for the senses, for the land and for the cows. Uh, he plays as a cowherd boy. That's his enjoyment. Uh, Govinda. Hmm? He enjoys playing with the cows. Enjoy he's, although he's the supreme controller, uh, although he's the greatest of the great, his enjoyment is to live in the simple village of Vrindavan and herd the cows and play with the coward boys and uh, exchange loving dealings with all the residents of Vrindavan. Hmm? It appears that he's a, a simple boy, but he's more opulent even than Lord Narayan in Vaikuntha. So the purpose of our Krishna consciousness movement is to revive our eternal loving relationship with Krishna and join Krishna in his uh, pleasure pastimes to render service to Krishna in the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. Well, this is all possible by the grace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who has given us in the Kali Yuga this uh, Sankirtan movement uh, Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtan by uh, chanting 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This chanting will revive our Krishna consciousness. The chanting is Krishna. Uh, the, we're simply chanting Krishna. And by chanting Krishna, naturally, you think of Krishna, you become Krishna conscious. Hmm? So this is our, our movement. Now we're Maya conscious. We're bodily conscious. We're national conscious or family conscious. But by chanting Hare Krishna, we become Krishna conscious and our life becomes successful. So I think we're supposed to answer some questions. Yeah? You have some questions this evening? What's the first one? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, my question is that uh, how to overcome this oh, boredom which comes in spiritual life over o the years? Overcome this? Boredom. It gets boring after some years. Boredom? Oh. It gets boring, huh? Like it's <laughs> the 16 rounds and reading the same, hearing the same story sometimes gets boring. Oh. Maybe you need to find some adventure in your life. You can, if you take these same stories and try to present them to others, the same philosophy, and try to present it to others, then things start to get exciting. Actually, if we just try to keep it to ourselves, it gets boring. It gets boring. But when we try to spread it to others, then it gets exciting. Huh? That's a fact. Uh, the example given in Srimad Bhagavatam is that if you keep water in a cracked pot, it leaks out. And you know, you're trying to keep it, but it's seeping out, and soon you have nothing. So if we try to keep Krishna consciousness and don't try to spread Krishna consciousness, it will be like water in a cracked pot you know, the pot will be empty. But if we try to spread Krishna consciousness, then it becomes anandam buddhi bhardhanam, overflowing. And then there's all sorts of excitement. Where would you like to go to spread Krishna consciousness? Maybe you could go to the Middle East. <laughs> this is one cure for boredom try to spread Krishna consciousness in the Middle East or China <laughs> or the former Soviet Union. There are so many places. Uh, Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> or even Bombay. <laughs> uh, the more we spread Krishna consciousness, the more we realize Krishna consciousness. It's not just that the, we're benefiting others by speaking about Krishna, but we benefit by speaking about Krishna. Hmm? Is that all right? Good. Yes. Okay, the microphone is here. Maharaj, uh, the spirit soul is the superior energy of Krishna and Maya is the, the material energy is inferior. Hmm. Then why is it so difficult to resist the temptations of Maya? As we being the spirit souls, why is it so difficult to... to uh, why are we being overcome by the inferior energy? Because we've taken shelter of the material energy. Uh, just like the... Well, no, I won't give that example. Just like a woman is weaker than a man, 
but uh, the man and woman get together and the woman completely controls him. <laughs> right? Why? Because he's thinking that he, he's, he gives his heart to the woman and he's expecting all kinds of love and reciprocation and so on. So he becomes controlled. So, uh, in a similar way, we're giving our heart to the material energy and we're expecting every kind of happiness and pleasure and so we're becoming controlled, although the material energy is inferior. Is that all right? Hmm. Wherever the microphone goes, that's that's where the next question is. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, we know that uh, the, like, uh, the ca uh, comparing is the cancer of mind. But uh, when uh, when we f uh, see, uh, uh, when we feel ourselves as a somewhat less other than, rather than other, so uh, that at that time we get the negativity complex. So uh, how to overcome all these negativity complex? But uh, though we know all this, that it is cancer. <laughs> Especially with all the competition from the fans and the saws and everything, you need to go slower. And help me out. Just start again. I, I, it's something about inferiority complexes. I got that. But just go a little slower and we have a lot of time. It's okay. Uh, the, why know that the uh, comparing is a, like cancer. Comparing the is like a cancer of mind. Cancer of mind. Yeah. Mm. So uh, when uh, we, we try to that uh, we should not uh, do any type of comparison. Shouldn't. Should not try to. Uh, should not try any. Uh, should not do any type of ca comparison with other. In uh, like in studies or So uh, when we see uh, when we feel uh, like uh, uh, less uh, rather than other in uh, studies. Less or in than. It's like behind or rather than other. I think I'm getting lost. Uh, then uh, why get a uh, negativity complex? So uh, how to overcome all this uh, negativity complex? You're from south, right? Where are you from? From Amravati, like Vidabha, Vidabha, Maharashtra. Maharashtra, oh, okay. I just came from south, so everybody sounds like they're from the south. <laughs> but I'm, I think I'm still, maybe somebody who, who question is, Okay. It's not big, so good to compare with others, but in competition someone comes ahead and then you feel inferior to others. So how to get past such negative feelings in life? Well, um, if he defeated you, then he is superior. Well, he came out ahead, so then he's superior. And we're inferior. Hmm? So admit it. You know, we all we know it's supposed to be bad for us to ever admit that we're inferior to everyone. We're no, we're I'm the best. But actually it's a fact, you know, he pulled out ahead of me in the in the course. So he's superior. Well that's good. We should be happy that actually some Someone is coming out ahead, it's all right. And if I become, if I'd become the first person, like that unfortunate person, I'd be all puffed up, proud, I'm number one, I'm the greatest, I defeated everyone. But by the kindness of Krishna, we came out number two or number three or number four. So that makes us a little humble that I'm not the greatest person. That's good for us. The material philosophy is somehow or other to be the best. 
And the spiritual philosophy is to serve the best. Different idea. Is that okay? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. Actually, our whole philosophy is inferiority. Krishna is superior and we're inferior. And the material world, everyone wants to be superior. That's called Maya. So if we get out of Maya, we're happy. Maharaj, uh, the two questions, uh, I'm just translating it into English. One question is uh, that one devotee is saying that we go to different organizations. He's been going on shopping, spiritual kind of shopping, going to different places. And wherever he mentions ISKCON, uh, people say, okay, you go, you practice spiritual life, okay. But when he comes here and he hears the philosophy, he feels very strongly that we have a very critical attitude towards many organizations and many philosophies. So he feels a little hurt. So he wants to know what exactly Krishna's opinion is and how should and what, we understand? What exactly what, what, what? How should we understand this? You know, we feel hurt and we don't like it. So it seems it that as you get to closer to ISKCON, ISKCON is critical of other philosophies yeah. and that hurts. Yeah. Well, ISKCON is critical of other philosophies. <laughs> there are so many philosophies you know, you're good and you're good and we're all good. And <laughs> But our philosophy is a little different. Krishna consciousness is good and so many other things are not good. Uh, there are so many bogus things, so many... Uh, I met some someone in the airport a few days back. Very nice person. He invited me that uh, he showed me a card that I'm from such and such organization and this is our beautiful temple in Delhi and uh, so on. I said, oh, it's very nice, yes. Uh, and what is your philosophy? Oh, we worship such and such person. He's God, Vishnu Avatar. So I said, oh, really? Uh, where is that in Shastra? He said, well, I, I, I forget. <laughs> So, we don't have such a great opinion about that. Where I said, well, we're worshipping Krishna as Bhagavan. And he's Bhagavan according to Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam according to Ramanuja Charja, Madhva Charja, Shankara Charja, all the Acharjas. Uh, someone else may or may not be Bhagavan, but Krishna is definitely Bhagavan. So, we're engaging in the service of Krishna. Hmm? So, to accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead is standard. All the Shastras are presenting Krishna in that way. And then somebody else comes along and says, me too, I'm also Bhagavan, I'm also Bhagavan. Or actually that person never said he was Bhagavan, but his followers say, oh he's Bhagavan, he's Bhagavan. Uh, and then you ask, where is that in Shastra? Oh, it's somewhere. We're not like that. Just like someone, there are law books. So what's there in the law book? That's law. And then someone else comes along and says, oh, this is also a law. That's also a law. Oh, really? Uh, can you show me in the law book? I, it's there someplace. Uh, or, no, well, I, I made up that law. It's also a law. No, no, we we can't accept that. It's not that everything is good. Just like food, there's good food, and then there's poison food. Food that's not at all good. We discriminate. You have to discriminate. Life intelligence means discrimination. It's not that if that everything is fit for eating. You know, that's the difference between an adult and a child. For a child, everything is for eating. You know, he puts anything in his mouth. But an adult looks and says, well, no, uh, marbles are not meant for eating. Rasgullas are meant for eating, but not marbles or so many things. That's called discrimination. 
So Srimad Bhagavatam Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu Shivana. The Srimad Bhagavatam proposes to discriminate between truth and illusion. The whole material world is the world of illusion. And in this material world, one of the propensities uh, is the tendency to make mistakes. And another tendency is a tendency to cheat. And, you know, it's not a big secret. The world is full of cheaters. In business, there are so many cheaters. In love, there are so many cheaters. In almost any field, in education, there are so many people cheating. So it's not really surprising that in the spiritual field also, there'll be so many cheaters, so many charlatans. You know, someone who produces a little uh, ash and he's God. You know? And if you watch the video, you can see how to do it. You can learn to do it too. Any, anyone here want, wants to be God? Anyone here would like to be God? We can train you how to do it. I have, a, I have a, one of my god brothers is, is a magician. You can go study under him and you can be god like that also. Do some magic tricks. You can produce some gold, some ash, some, you know, Shiva lingas can come out of your mouth and stuff like that. But this is the material world. It's full of cheating. It's full of cheating. So, as in purchasing something or choosing whatever it is, you have to discriminate between the real thing and the bogus thing. So in the spiritual field also. You know, if you any time you, you pass a five hundred rupee note, the person looks at it very carefully. So why when we're thinking about our ultimate goal in life and how to achieve it, why should we not look very carefully? And why should we not be surprised if there are some counterfeit notes? And if there are counterfeit notes, why shouldn't we say so? Not that we keep silent and say, oh yeah, that's a nice note. You know, because we don't want to offend someone. No, it's our duty. We have to say, this is not a real note. Hare Krishna. One more last question one devotee has. He says uh, that uh, we are very inspired by sannyasis in ISKCON who have been in the renounced order like yourself for almost 40 years, more than 40 years. And we also are inspired to join Brahmachari Ashram. But we are, we face lot of uh, opposition from parents. Two things, parents and many responsibilities like earning money and fulfilling certain obligations. And we feel it seems in, impossible to join. So how do we face this? You know, we have a desire but we are not able to translate it into action. So how can we join the ashram? Well, these things you have to consult with the local devotees. I think you're, the local devotees here are experienced in these questions. Pretty much, I think everyone who's joined the ashram has a similar experience, that they joined over the objections of their parents and their superiors, and they had so many responsibilities. And somehow or other, they managed to, you managed to join. So you're the... Ex America, it's easy. Nobody cares about anything you just joined. <laughs> but here, because you're responsible and cultured people, there are some obstacles. So that makes it a little more difficult. But so many examples are sitting here, how they've overcome those obstacles. You can also do that. Uh, because this is not the highest... But it, even consider, you know, that people do this for far less important causes. People give up their family for some national cause. Mahatma Gandhi practically neglected his family responsibilities to work for national independence. So what was more important, to be the father of few children or the father of the country. Hmm? He thought that to be, uh, to free India, the people of India from the British rule is more important than earning money as a 
a barrister. So maybe our parents think he was wrong, that he should have stayed at home and made money and served his family. Then, you see? So there, there's the little general standard responsibility to serve my, my parents, to serve my home, to serve my family, to serve my community. And then there are more important causes that deserve our attention. And the most important cause is to get free from the cycle of birth and death, to get free from material existence, and to help others get free from material existence. Even the national movement is really a material movement. You know, now you have independence, the British aren't in charge, but everyone's still eating the same future patties or the same, you know, it hasn't changed. There's so many problems then, there's so many problems now. Just now we own the problems before somebody else owned the problems. It doesn't solve the ultimate questions of life. But here's the ultimate issue, the ultimate campaign, the ultimate goal, the ultimate project. So if we sacrifice some lesser responsibilities for the greater responsibilities, that's not wrong. If I, re if I sacrifice my uh, greater responsibilities for some lesser thing, if I give up my parents to go, you know, drinking and smoking and woman, that's very bad because I have responsibilities and I'm neglecting them for something irresponsible. The greater thing should not be given up for the smaller thing. So here's the greatest responsibility to revive our eternal relationship with Krishna. If it's my duty to serve my parents, how much more is it my duty to serve the Supreme Parent? Pitaha masya jagato Mata dhata pitama. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, I'm the father of the whole universe. I'm the uh, mother, I'm the maintainer, I'm the grandfather of everything. So if we uh, put aside the service of the small parents for the service of the greater parent, is that wrong? So, of course, it's a negotiation also. Uh, how to not needlessly antagonize or dissatisfy our family members. Uh, there's some art to it, and that you have to learn from our brahmacharis here. But philosophically, we should understand that we're not giving up our responsibilities. Rather, we're accepting the greater responsibility. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. You spoke about the origin of Maya. You spoke about the origin of Maya and the reason of the origin. And the? Reason for the origin of Maya. Reason for Maya, yes. Yeah. So can you tell me how can we overcome the Maya? How, the how can we overcome life? the Maya? Yes, that's stated by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, Daivihiyesha gunamayi mama maya durachya. Maya is very, almost impossible to overcome because she's uh, empowered by Krishna himself, by God himself. So she's very strong. Daivihiyesha uh, gunamayi. Mama maya duratya. Very difficult. But ma me vye prapadyante maya me tam tarantite. When we surrender to Krishna, at once we cross over maya. Krishna is the controller of maya. When we surrender to Krishna, then maya is finished. Simple formula. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, why does a person fear God? Why does a person fear God? I don't know, just like we fear, you know, a person with a gun or a cow with big horns. God's very powerful. Actually, and, and also, for from another point of view, why do the criminals fear the police? So shouldn't we actually love him, love God? Yes, we should love God. In the Bible, it said. The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. The 
fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. The beginning is to be to have some uh, little to understand the power of God. God is very powerful. Uh, he can wipe us all out in a second. So, just like our uh, parents, there's some fear there. That if I do the wrong thing, just like Krishna, he, he was stealing butter, so his mother came with a stick to beat him. So Krishna was fearing. Uh, so the children have some fear that if I misbehave, then my father may do something. He may hit me. He may punish me. There's some fear. So that fear is actually healthy so that we learn some discipline. But on the other side, as we, uh, we come to understand that although I have to be a little careful, but actually uh, if I'm not doing mischief, then I don't have anything to fear. And my parents are not actually out to get me. They're not looking to punish me. Actually, it's their love for me uh, that's m motivating them to punish me. And if I don't act in such a way that I need to be punished, then they won't act that way. They'll be very affectionate. They'll be very kind. So the beginning is to understand that uh, due to my criminal activities, I'm in trouble with God. Uh, there's so much... Uh, yes, God's material energy is very fearsome. And God himself is there as time. And he's killing everyone. Hmm? So some fear can be there. But as we purify our hearts, then the fear becomes love. The fear becomes love. Alright, then what about the statement? What about the statement? This statement, this is a thought. What about it? Why do we actually fear? If we have, uh, if we do our, have something our destiny, or we just do our karma, mm. why, what's the need to fear the results? Why? What's the need to fear the results? What is the need to fear the results then? What is the need to fear the result? There's no need to fear the result. Karma nyevadikaraste, everybody has a right to work. And you don't have to fear the result as long as you don't hold on to it. Ma pale shukadachana. That result is not yours. Just suppose you are uh, counting money in the bank. So you have a right to do that. Somebody can give you a lakh of rupees, ten lakhs of rupees, a crore. And that's all right. You can accept all of that money. But now if you think, now he's given me 10 lakhs or a crore, it's mine. Now you have a lot to fear. Because <laughs> it's not your money. You're just acting on behalf of the bank. You're a servant of the bank. And your job is to take in however much it is and give out however much it is. And you don't think at any time that this is mine. You just do the needful. You do your duty. So everybody has a right to do that. But we should understand that nothing belongs to me. It all belongs to Krishna. So I have a right to work. And Krishna uh, gives a quota to everyone. This much you need for your livelihood. You need to eat. You need basic things. But actually it's all rented property. It's all lo on loan. It's not... This is mine, this is mine. The whole world is going around. Thinking, this is mine, this is mine. They write their name on the building. They write their name on this. They write their name on that. It's all mine. No, it's Krishna's. And even I'm, you know, if I'm... If we, therefore, the devotees, they go around writing Krishna's name on everything. Everything belongs to Krishna. Even I belong to Krishna. Then you'll never become entangled. Uh, and the Isha Upanishad it said 
that you can go on for thousands of years working and never become entangled. As long as you understand Ishaba Shemidam Sarvam, everything belongs to Krishna. And I have a right to take my quota, but not more. Then you'll not be entangled. Then there's nothing to fear. But a thief always has to be in fear. Um, police may catch up with it. Is that alright? Shri Gurudev, uh, how, come, uh, how can we overcome false pride in spiritual life? How can we overcome false pride in spiritual life? Hmm. By association with those who are more advanced. For two reasons, just like this gentleman was saying, you know, that people come out ahead of us. So when we associate with the more advanced devotees, then we'll see. I'm thinking I'm something, but see how much more advanced this devotee is. So that's good for us, you know. I'm not the number one greatest. I'm, you know, I still have so much to learn. And another reason why it's good is that those who are actually advanced are humble. So by association with those who are humble, we also become humble. Is that okay? Hmm. Uh, if uh, one just chants 16 rounds daily, then can he overcome uh, mind and material senses? If one just chants 16 rounds daily, can he overcome maya and the material senses? Yes. By chanting Hare Krishna attentively. You know, maya will, this is the medicine. Well, follow four regulations no gambling, no intoxication, no meat eating, no illicit sex, and chant 16 round daily. I have one question. Uh, people say that you should always pray to God when you are in difficult phase, you have a lot of anxiety. God will come, God will help you out. Uh, he will try to uh, make everything bad into good things. So I just want to know like how exactly. Yes, generally people, of when they're fortunate, Sukritina, uh, pious people, when they're in trouble, pray to God. Now I'm in difficulty, please help. Now I'm really in difficulty, please, please. Hmm? And then when things are okay, then thank you just, very much yeah. and now on with the show. Yeah, that's what I've seen lately. Yeah. So, but the Krishna conscious person uh, who is properly guided, uh, he his entry, he develops an attachment to Krishna. When things are going bad, then he depends on Krishna. And when things are going well, then he knows it's the grace of Krishna. So whether things are up or down, he's always thinking of Krishna. Is that all right? Oh, we have some questions here. What is the meaning of complete dependence on Krishna? How to completely depend on Krishna. Actually, we're all dependent on Krishna. You can't even take your next breath without Krishna. Krishna is supplying the air. Krishna is supplying the power to the lungs. You can't even take your next breath without Krishna. So, like, you know, we, whether we understand or not understand, we're dependent on Krishna. It's just a question of realization. The self-realized person understands, yes, I'm dependent on Krishna for everything. Yes. How to increase our determination, sincerity, how to realize the urgency in our sadhana, especially chanting and book reading? Very good question. Again, it's by good association. If we associate with those who are determined, who are serious, then we, you know, it rubs off. 
we, we also start to become more serious, more determined. Mm -hmm. It's by discipline, by, uh, by our own inner desire, and it's also by association. Even if we may not be very strong, when we're in the association of those who are strong, then we develop strength also. So much depends on association. Mm. For overcoming Maya, we have to surrender to Krishna. But when Maya attacks, specifically lust, then we lose desire to surrender to Krishna. then we want to surrender to Rekha or whoever it is. <laughs> so we lose the desire to surrender to Krishna or approach devotees. Then what should we do? Therefore Krishna says, tasmat tvam indriyan yado niyam yabhar uh, From the very beginning we should curb down Lust. Chanakya Pandit says that there are three things that one should uh, attend to right away in the very beginning debt, fire, and disease. A debt, if you don't attend to it, becomes bigger debt. Fire, if you don't attend to it, becomes bigger fire. And disease, if you don't attend to it, some small disease becomes a big disease. So lust is like that also. If we attend to it in the very beginning by uh, treating it with Krishna consciousness, then it's a small problem. Left untreated, it becomes a big problem. So from the very beginning, uh, we shouldn't let lust spiral out of control. Niyamya. Niyamya means uh, discipline. Uh, so what is that discipline? Chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. That's the main thing. To be always in the association of Krishna, Yaha Krishna, Taha Maya, Nahi Adhikar. Where there's Krishna, then Maya can't be there. Uh, please, no more uh, flashes and all of that stuff. The Apart from that, there are some practical guidelines in scripture uh, about association with women specifically. Uh, if we associate very closely and freely with women, then naturally there will be the development of lusty desires and things may spin out of control. And therefore the uh, Vedic culture prescribes restrict prescribes distance actually distance doesn't mean you know one side of Bombay all the men the other side all the <laughs> but it means that we shouldn't mix very in the western style Bombay has become rather westernized uh, but in traditional Indian culture still the men and women don't freely hang out together and so many things. Why? Because that's, you know, like rubbing sticks together, you know. That's how you build a fire. So uh, we should be conservative in our association with women. Uh, better to be, we have that expression, better to be safe than sorry. Uh, Prabhuji, we like normally Vaishnavas or any religion you take. Vaishnavas or any religion you take? Any religion for that matter. We like to associate ourselves with the kind of people who have the same thinking or same guidelines mm. which is followed. And normally if we take Vaishnavas, like mm. we'll do whatever is told by our Guru 
and mm. whatever adharma is going outside krishna will take care of it mm. i am totally against that Thanks. i i am a devotee of krishna as a friend so i am totally against him coming down taking avtaras because people you're completely against whoa, whoa, whoa. what is it you're completely against krishna taking avtaras again and again krishna what taking what are you against, are you against? you're against it well it does, if you're against it does that mean he can't do it no no, no i'm i'm trying to make a different point Okay. The point I am trying to make is, we don't try to curb a dharma. We, we don't try to do what? Curb a dharma. To do what to a dharma? Curb. Stop. Oh, oh. One person. A dharma. I. We don't try to curb a dharma. A dharma. Okay. Okay. We like. We'll do this. We'll pray. We'll chant, and whatever outside has to be done will be done by Krishna. But I have. total faith on the geeta and its power mm. that i know if i step out alone with faith in him and i want to do something good nobody can stop me because i know he is there with me i'm not like it's pride or ego that i'm going to stop it i know because he is with me mm. in today's world adharma is way ahead than dharma mm. i'm not talking about doing good for the society mm. you can do good by giving food to the beggars or doing some social service i'm talking about fighting adharma all the corrupt politicians that's like, fighting a dharma yes wait a second let me think about that a second giving food to beggars is how you fight a dharma is not how you fight that is social not service. how you fight no. okay now we're on the same page good okay. <laughs> so No, it's good. Yeah, but I'm more against what are we as Krishna conscious people mm. doing to fight this adharma? Yeah, good question. The, uh, it's very good. It's not that Vaishnav means that I'll sit in the temple and Krishna can come as an avatar and and fight a dharma, and I'll chant Hari Krishna and take prasadam and sleep in the temple. We don't find that Arjun told Krishna that you fight, you fight the Kauravas. I'm going to take rest or go chant on my beads. He was active. Krishna had some program for fighting a dharma, and he told Arjun, "Nimitta matra bhava sabya sachi." I want you to be instrumental in my mission. So it's very good. We should all think that it's not that Krishna is supposed to do everything, and I'm supposed to do nothing, or Krishna is supposed to do everything. He can fight a dharma, and I'll watch television. <laughs> But our business is to serve Krishna. So if Krishna's program is to fight a dharma, then I should help Krishna. I should be serving Krishna in fighting a dharma, just like. Ram had a program for fighting a dharma, so Hanuman uh, assisted in that. Pro uh, Ram could have done everything; he didn't need Hanuman. He's all powerful, but Hanuman volunteered that let me also render some service. So, in that way, we should all uh, desire to help Krishna in his mission. In this uh, kali yuga, Krishna has descended as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for spreading this yuga dharma. this chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare so uh, all of us we can spread this chanting ask people wherever you go jai dakotari ka krishna upadesh give them this instruction chant hare krishna give them this knowledge uh, imam uh, dharmamritam idam this bhagavad gita Krishna says, "No one becomes more dear to me than the person who spreads this message." So the temple has whole casefuls of Bhagavad Gita's. So take some, take some, distribute, uh, meet people. Please, you're, you know, you have, you're so fortunate. You've taken your birth in India. You're living in India. You have. This is the heritage of India, and you've not understood the message of Krishna. 
Please read this Bhagavad Gita. Please chant Hare Krishna. Please become Krishna conscious. Uh, then people may or may not, but now we're doing our duty. The way you get rid of a dharma is to establish dharma. Dharma samsthapanartaya. So it's very, very good to have that spirit that not that Krishna will do everything, but I have to help. So just like Prabhupada, he went in his old age to America to spread Krishna consciousness. And by the grace of Krishna, it was such a successful thing. And Prabhupada used to say, I am only one Indian. And by the grace of Krishna, my little efforts have had some su success. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Bharata Bhumite Manusha Janma Hoilojara. Janma Sartha Kori Kara Parupakar. And everyone who's taken his birth as a human being, Manusha Janma, in India, should make his life successful in Krishna consciousness and do Parupakar, spread it for the benefit of others. So Prabhupada used to say, I'm only one Indian. Now, if so many other Indians take it up, what will be the benefit? How much benefit can be bestowed on the world? Just if, suppose in this whole room, everyone takes it seriously. Someone takes this country, someone takes that country, someone takes this province, someone takes that province. Spirit Krishna consciousness can spread like wildfire. So it's very good. Keep that spirit. Thank you very much. Be a leader of this Krishna consciousness movement. People will be very indebted to you. Hari Bol? Ah, here. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I just came across this statement of Srila Prabhupada in, um, in the purport of the fourth verse of Nectar of Instruction, mm -hmm. where he says that in all parts of the world there are different religious systems are established. And whenever a religious system turns into love of God, then it is, it is um, perfect. Mm. Then it, 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 yeah, it is perfect. So my question is, on the one side, we, um, you know, we like, when we are preaching, we like to say um, you know, how, how our movement or how our religion is um, liberal by saying that um, we actually we don't want to, or Prabhupada said, we don't want to turn um, like Christians into our religion, but we want them to be more sincere in their own religion. So, and on the other side, we say, you know, this is the only way, this is the only way by, this is, you know, we, we are, we are um, saying mostly um, that Lord Chaitanya said that this is the only way, this is the only way by chanting the holy names. Yes. So it seems to be... It's not a question of my religion, your religion. Is it that only, and this is the only way, chanting of the holy name of God. The Muslims have a holy, holy names of God, the Christians have holy names of God. Jews have holy names of God. Everyone has holy names of God. So if you don't like Hare Krishna, pick up something from your scripture, chant that. But if you think that you're going to practice yoga and realize God by meditation, that, was, that worked in Satya Yoga when people had 10,000 or 100,000 years to do it. If you think that just doing big yagyas, that was very good in Treta Yoga uh, when people had the capability uh, if you think that you're going to do it by grand temple worship, that was in Dwapara Yuga. Uh, the present age, Kali Yuga, Kalo Tad Hari Kirtanad. A glorification of God by chanting His holy names will be successful. It's not a sectarian thing. You don't like the holy name we chant? Chant some other holy name of God. God has so many. Or take this one. Isn't that all right? Okay, easy. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, I would like to ask that uh, there are many religions, right? So, those no, who are... Many really. Religion is one. Religion is not Christian, Hindu, this, this, that. Religion means uh, your eternal function. Just like sugar. Its religion is to be sweet. If somebody says this sugar is salty... That's not, there's irreligion. Uh, so, the okay. religion of the living being is to serve God. Doesn't, the, uh, this other thing is superficial. I'm Hindu, I'm Christian, I'm this, I'm that. The real religion is one. Okay, fine. So, uh, any other, like, uh, suppose a Christian is a great devotee of Jesus. 
and he is worshipping Jesus like anything hmm. right so will he get liberated in that particular birth uh-huh. will that person get liberated yeah why not okay. he just has to do it but Jesus said that there are some commandments so it's not just that, that I say I love Jesus but I have to follow just like if I say I love Krishna do you follow Krishna's instructions well no but I love Krishna so love means follow also just like Jesus said thou shalt not kill not that you know I love Jesus and I run a slaughterhouse So these principles are universal. No intoxication. It's not that, well, if you're Hindu, intoxication isn't very good. But if you're Christian, it's fine. Uh, no illicit sex. Well, that's for the Christians. But for the Hindus, it's all right. No. These are universal religious principles. No gambling, no intoxication, no meat-eating, no illicit sex. Hmm? So we don't care what religion, you know, what, what label we put on ourselves. But we should follow the principles of religion, actually. Uh, that microphone's not working yet. Maharaj, if a person is from different sampradaya, if a person is, is from different sampradaya, a different sampradaya, can he join the ISKCON movement and can take diksha from Guru Maharaj of ISKCON? Yeah. You can come from any community. Sampradaya means community, spiritual community. So anyone can come from any spiritual community and join ISKCON. Mm-hmm. And we have, we have many devotees. I was just in Tirupati. And many of our devotees come from the Ramanuja Sampradaya. Because in the south, especially, Ramanuja Sampradaya is very strong. Similarly, here in Bombay, we have many devotees from the Pushti Mark Sampradaya. And different, different Sampradayas. So, everyone is welcome. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, why is it that, first of all, people don't take any initiative? Uh, in the spiritual life. They don't come fro- forward, means they have attachment for Krishna, but they are like, they keep it inside. They, they, they don't show it outside. They people have attachment to Krishna. Yeah, they keep inside only. They don't show, like they don't chant and something. They don't believe in chanting. They just say, okay, I, I have, I have attachment to Krishna, but I don't chant. I don't serve the deity. I don't give any contribution to Krishna, but I'm very attached to Krishna. But... <laughs> Yeah, but people don't take the initiative and then to, if someone takes the initiative, then there are thousands of people to, uh, means uh, there are thousands of people to oppose him. That why are you doing so? What will you get by doing so? And all that. So how can you overcome all such people? That's a separate question, huh? Yeah. So the first question is that, you know, it's easy to give lip service that I love Krishna. Yes, yes, I love Krishna. But it's like, you know, you're, you come home at the end of the day and you're looking for your uh, ready for your meal and your wife comes and you say oh is, is dinner ready and she says I love you so much <laughs> love means service it doesn't mean oh, I'm so attached to you I love you it means I do find something for you so if I love Krishna then I'll want to serve Krishna. And if I want to serve Krishna, then Maya has so many agents. What are you doing that for? Why are you wasting your time serving Krishna? What about, well, what about me? (laughs) What about us? Or what about this or that or the other thing? Yeah, that's called Maya. So our business is to reject Maya and cultivate Krishna consciousness. Is that all right? Krishna Maharaj, 
uh, how to maintain the good relationship with the Vaishnavas. And sometimes we have ego problems with Vaishnavas. How to maintain a good relationship with Vaishnavas. And sometimes we have ego problems with them. Sometimes we have ego problems with them. Ego problems. Ego problems. How to overcome the propensity? Rupa Goswami recommends that there are uh, six ways to develop nice loving relationships with Vaishnavas. The first is uh, the dati. Give them something. Uh, everyone likes to get some gift. You can cultivate that, that, to give something to the devotees. Maybe big thing or small thing, could be some little anything. Give something. Just like in the material world, how do you make a relationship with someone? You, give, you, know, you find something they like, here, this is for you. Well, really? So you try to please the Vaishnavas by giving them something. It doesn't have to be, a, they say it's the thought that counts. Not that you have to go broke spending money on the Vaishnavas. You give some, some any, a small thing. And the second thing is pratigrinati. When they give you something, then accept that. To receive something as a gift. Just the devotees are giving something. Uh, even some flower, mahaprasadam, or they're giving some book or something. So to uh, give something, give and take, give and take. Tadati pratigrinati and guhyam akyati prichchati to reveal your mind to someone. That creates an intimate relationship. You come to me and say, you know, I was thinking about this and this and this. What do you think? I don't know who to... I'm not telling anyone, but I thought I'd talk to you. Then that creates an intimate relationship. And guya makyati, to inquire from the Vaishnavas. So what's going on with you? You're, you're, everything is all right? You're, uh, any problem is there or anything? Huh? Uh, or we inquire from them about Krishna. Uh, we tell them something that we heard about Krishna. We inquire from them something about Krishna. That's bodhiyanta parasparam, enlightening one another about Krishna. Uh, so that exchange of ideas or exchange of confidential knowledge, either something confidential knowledge about Krishna or about our own life in Krishna consciousness, so that creates closeness among the devotees. And bhungte bhojayate chaiva. Everyone likes to get something nice to eat. So give some prasadam to the devotees. Distribute prasadam. Uh, something, something. Give. Oh, I have some prasadam for you. The devotees will be very happy. And when you, uh, some Vaishnava is giving prasadam, then accept. Uh, that's also to be on the other side, the receiving side. So these are all give and take relationships. Hmm? To give a gift, to receive a gift. To reveal your mind, to hear while a devotee reveals his mind. And to give some prasadam, some food, and to accept. Sadvidham uh, priti lakshanam. These are ways to develop loving relationships. And if you develop these loving relationships, then ego doesn't get the chance to uh, crop up. And if sometimes because of our past conditioning, ego does come up, oh, that's ego. If it comes up in us, then to know, oh, that's my false ego. And if it comes up in someone else, oh, that's just his false ego. Uh -huh. It's not the real person. If someone is influenced by false ego, so that's just the false ego. But the person is nice, just the false ego is a little disruptive. But otherwise, because he's serving Krishna, he's a good person. Hmm? That means we have to be a little tolerant also. Is that okay?
Hare Krishna Maharaj. How to overcome hypocrisy on the path of bhakti? How to overcome hypocrisy? Hypocrisy. Wow, that's a big question. In ourselves or around us? In ourselves. Yeah, that's the hardest one. Well, we overcome hypocrisy by being genuine. Hypocrite means that he's putting on a show of one thing, but he's really about something else. So we have to become genuine, and for that we have to purify the heart. So many things are there as coverings to the heart. We'll serve Krishna, and then we'll do a little service, and then we'll want to show the world, I'm serving Krishna, I'm so great, I'm this, I'm that. Uh, and maybe we'll, uh, in so many ways, cheat. We'll make a show of one thing, but really, they, the expression is, drinking water underwater while taking a bath on a fast day. Uh -huh. We've taken a vow that today it's a fast day, I'll not even drink water. And then while taking bath underwater, we'll drink water. <laughs> so, these things we overcome by cultivating the real thing. The false thing is driven out by the real thing. The darkness is driven out by the sunlight. I'll look at all these questions. Okay, let's take a few more. Hare minutes. Krishna Prabhuji. Okay. I am interested into getting well, information. Well, first we need to get a, a fix on your location. Where are you here? Okay. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. I want to get information about Karma Yoga, uh, Bhakti Yoga and Jnana Yoga. Yes. Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga and Jnana Yoga. Very good. Bhakti Yoga means pure devotional service to Krishna. Karma means uh, material activity, ordinary material work for sense enjoyment. And jnana means mental speculation, figure things out. When karma comes in touch with bhakti, when it gets a coating of bhakti on it, it becomes karma yoga. Yoga means plus. When you add Krishna, the karma becomes karma yoga. When you add Krishna, the jnana becomes jnana yoga. And when it comes to pure Krishna consciousness, that's bhakti yoga. Is that all right? Uh, how we will improve the, our bhakti yoga means uh, to improve our life in this kali yoga. Means how do we improve bhakti yoga? Uh, means uh, how it will helpful to us. Means how it will it should be improved by us. Means what type of karma we should do. What kind of karma we should do? Anukul karma. Anukul means whatever is favorable for the service of Krishna, that we should do. Anukul yasya sankalpa, pratikul yasya varjanam. Whatever is favorable for the service of Krishna, that karma we should do. And whatever is unfavorable, that karma we should reject. Then how do we know what's favorable and unfavorable? from the Shastras, from books like Bhagavad Gita as it is, from Srimad Bhagavatam, from the sadhus, the devotees, and from the spiritual master. Is that all right? Hmm. Shall I take a written question? Let's see what else is here. It starts here. Okay. <laughs> it is said that when we do something good, we are not the doer. We are just the instrument and the hand of Krishna. But when we do something wrong, we blame our karmas and we become the doer. <laughs> uh, 
And if we are the doer in the first case, then why should also we not take? Why should we also not take no credit in the second case? If we are not the doer, then we should not be responsible for any wrong deeds. Okay, so we see where that that goes. Yes, actually, I'm not the doer. Uh, Krishna is doing everything, uh, and I'm cooperating. I'm cooperating. Uh, I'm agreeing. All right, I'll. I agree to be instrumental for you. Uh, so when we do something good, it means Krishna conscious. We agree, that Krishna, uh, you want to do this. I'll cooperate with you. And on the other side, Maya, you want to do this, I'll cooperate with you. In either case, we're a tool. We're manipulated. Either we're manipulated by Krishna or we're manipulated by Maya. Hmm? So, in one sense, you can say we're not uh, the doer. So, when I do something good, it's Krishna that takes the credit. When I do something foolish, then Maya can take the credit. But when the Krishna credit is there, the person who cooperates with Krishna also gets the credit. Just like in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Krishna actually was the one who killed everyone. He showed in the uh, Virat Rupa that actually Bhishma, Drona, Jayadrata, they're all killed by me in the form of time. But you can become my instrument. Nimitta Matra. That means you can also share in the credit. Krishna likes to spread the credit around among his devotees. So you become famous as the hero of Kurukshetra by serving my will. Act as my instrument. Krishna likes to make his devotees famous, just like a father. Sometimes he uh, gives the credit to his son, that you uh, take the credit for this work. So, also when we do something foolish, then it's maya, actually, but we cooperated, so we become known as playthings in the hand of maya. We become known as playthings, because we've surrendered to maya. Hmm? And Maya, Krishna deals with his servants by uh, freeing them from material existence. And Maya deals with her servants by keeping them in material existence. Uh, she deals with her servants by kicking them with threefold miseries. So in that way, uh, we're just servants, but you have a choice where to serve. Serve Krishna or serve Maya. That much is up to us. If one has to go for a job at the place where there's no association of devotees, how to remain Krishna conscious and enthusiastic? Well, first thing is this have to. Uh, we may not have to go to a place where there are no devotees. If possible, we should go to a place where there are devotees. I know many people, they've gone to one school, not another, or one job, not another, because in the one place there were devotees, in the other place there were no devotees. Chanakya Pandit says one should never go any place where there's no river, no doctor, and no friend. No temple and no friend. You know, people are going here and there, but if there's no river there, then not a very good place to go. If there's no doctor there, it's not a very good place to go. If there's no temple there, then it's not a very good place. And if you have no friends there, then it's another useless kind of place. So if there's no Krishna consciousness, then why go there? We try to avoid. Better to go to the place where there are devotees. Now sometimes, all right, so everyone has to make a living and it may not be that job offers are coming from the places where the devotees have their jobs. Hmm? So then I sometimes have to take something this way, that way. So then maintain uh, the, the touch of devotees as far as possible. 
Suppose if you're working in some job, some other side of us, to still come to the temple, associate with the devotees, uh, here, either on the internet or uh, from CDs or one way or another, read the books and stay in the association of Krishna by following the same practices that the devotees are following. There's also another way. If there are no devotees, make some devotees. Prabhupada came to America, he was the only devotee, but then he made some more devotees. So that's also, you know, we're, you go to work, they'll preach to you. They'll talk to you about what interests them. They'll talk about cricket, they'll talk about this, that. So if they're doing it, you can do it. If, if they can talk to you about this nonsense that you're not interested in, you can talk to them about what they're not interested in. And it may turn out that they'll also become interested. So make devotees. Actually, the devotees are there. They just, you know, you have to scratch the surface a little bit. It's like cream. The cream is there in the milk. You just have to let it come to the top. Or you, you, uh, the ghee is there in yogurt. You just have to churn it. Uh, or fire is there in wood. You just have to bring it out. So Krishna consciousness is there in the heart of everyone and make the attempt and you'll see. Uh, you can make others. As you, someone made you Krishna conscious, it's like electricity. It travels from one person to the next. Uh, yeah, okay. Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, uh, the other day, one of my friends was asking me, I mean, he said that uh, Krishna, sorry, a friend one of my, was asking yeah, you. my friend, he was asking me. I mean, he made a statement. He said that Krishna has got sixteen thousand wives. Krishna what? Krishna has got sixteen thousand wives, mm -hmm. and he's had so many affairs. And and what? He's got so many affairs. Huh. So why can't I have one? And why can I have wh one? Yeah, yeah. He asked me, and of course, Krishna protecting his wives and Krishna not having lusty desires doesn't really appeal to people. I mean, they feel uh, they cannot relate to it. So how can we answer them in a way? Which well, first of all, you're contradictory. The person is saying, Krishna had 16,000 wives, he had so many love affairs, yeah. and why can't I have one? Yeah. And then you're saying, on the other hand, that these affairs don't ap appeal to no, people. No, no, no. I'm saying a devotee who's answering him. He huh? might say, I I've heard devotees who answer such questions, saying that, no, Krishna gives protection to his, uh, all his wives, and Krishna doesn't have lusty desires, like us. Even if you think Krishna has lusty desires like us, he has unlimited lusty desires. Yeah. God is unlimited, so his desires are, are unlimited. Yeah. Our desires, we're small, so we only have small desires. Mm -hmm. So even if you take it that Krishna has desires, his lusty desires, his lusty desires are unlimited. Yeah. That means they're not, it's in a different class altogether. But Maharaj, how can we answer them in a way which you have lusty desires. <laughs> yeah. So where do those lusty desires come from? They must be there in the Supreme. Just like the little drop of water, it has hydrogen, oxygen. It must be there in the ocean. But in the ocean, it's unlimited. And here it's limited. So we have some desires. We would like to be with a young girl or whatever. Uh, young girls want to be with a young boy. Why? Because it's there in God. But the thing is that here in the material world it's exhibited in a perverted form. Actually it's exploitation. That the young man wants to exploit the young woman, the young woman is also thinking how to exploit the young man. And it's a mutual exploitation society. He says, you know, I love you so much, but really what it means is I want to gratify my senses with your help. And she says, oh I love you so much, but really it means well, okay, let's make a deal. So it's not actual love, it's a kind of perverted reflection of actual love. But the real thing is there in Krishna, uh, in pure form, in pure form. The same thing that appears impure in our case is pure when it's touched by Krishna. Uh, because Krishna, he's described, the Papa Vidham, Asnavaram Shuddham, 
apapavitam pavitram paramam bhavan in the Bhagavad Gita Krishna is supremely pure ah, he's dancing with gopis and he's completely pure yes how is that just like the sun the sun is absorbing urine people pass urine in the fields and how does that urine disappear the sun absorbs it so now does the sun become septic no rather the place becomes antiseptic because it's touched by the sun so the same thing that seems that is impure on the material platform as soon as you bring Krishna it's pure as soon as you bring Krishna it's pure uh, so Krishna's married life and because Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead we have trouble with one wife Krishna marries 16,108 it's not a problem if he married 16 million it would still only he only be working at you know partial capacity he can marry unlimited numbers and there's no difficulty for him uh, everything the these pastimes of Krishna were worshipped by Sukadev Goswami he's narrating Srimad Bhagavatam who's Sukadev Goswami he's so pure he was a 16 year old boy but because he was an avadhuta he was you know a sadhu so he was w walking around naked and while he was walking he passed by some young girls who were bathing well, bathing means they had no clothes on so young girls bathing and he was a, a young man and he came by but they they looked at him they didn't even bother to put their clothes on because they saw from his face that there's no material thought in this person just like a child you know the women dress or undress in the presence of the little children they don't think oh no because the children have no lusty desires they, they have no lusty desires they don't even see the difference just like Prabhupada told the story that one of his disciples had a little daughter the daughter asked the father uh, daddy when you were uh, my age were you a boy or a girl <laughs> so the girls looked at Sukadev Goswami and they, they knew that he doesn't see any difference. There's no material consideration. So that Sukadev Goswami, he's the speaker of Srimad Bhagavatam. He's talking about the, the pastimes of Krishna and the gopis. So there couldn't have been any material interest there. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was such a strict sannyasi that women were advised if they wanted to offer their respects, they should offer their respects from way over there from a distance he never had any close association with very strict about one of his associates who was in the renounced order happened to glance lustily at a young woman he kicked him out very strict about the renounced order but that same Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is relishing the activities of Krishna and the gopis so how can these activities be like the ordinary material activities you see it's in a completely different but people because they don't they're not educated in the science of Krishna they mistake one thing for another thanks a lot Maharaj thank Very you well. should we answer a few more questions or should we stop tell me who's in charge what should I do two or three more okay Krishna Maharaj mm -hmm. often at times when we accept Krishna consciousness we become speculative at times trying to judge the activities of Krishna with the result we get more d diverted how should we be, we be conscious that Krishna is the supreme personality so that we can execute more of Krishna consciousness and be fearful of what we are doing so that our goal of life is not lost because it happens like many a times uh, the mind tricks us and we become more fall on 
we become we become uh, uh, we become uh, more fallen i mean and this is uh, i mean the because of the result of the conditioning of the mind so, so how should we be, be serious and uh, not judge the activities because i often face this problem and with the result there is always a negative feeling about the activities of krishna or in general i mean there is no sincere uh, application to devotion service and lot of judgment mm. which happens from our side yes we should keep things simple you know the mind says why are you keeping things simple let's make things complicated <laughs> you know why keep it simple we could make it three times as complicated wouldn't that be better so krishna consciousness is simple for the simple it's actually very simple thing we hear from bhagavad gita from shrimad bhagavatam we understand by uh, inquiring from the devotees from the spiritual master and we can just take it as it is but the mind says no that's not good enough we could look at it this way we could look at it that way we could this means this that means that this couldn't be possible this must be like that so the best thing is to tell the mind get lost you know i don't need your suggestions from the world of mental speculation uh concocting we don't need the help of we don't need this input from the mind you know it's it's like the babble of sea waves you know the sea waves come and yes the mind is always it's like you know like a kid that never stops talking so uh, the best thing for the agitated and agitating mind is this maha mantra because to chant hari krishna you don't have to think anything well, you know we're, we're so busy thinking that we can't even think straight huh the mind is always got to have something to say so the mind becomes our enemy because it's always suggesting something foolish so therefore the bhagavad gita says that the mind can be our best friend or the mind can be the worst enemy udhare atman atmanam not manam avasadi one should elevate oneself by the mind and not degrade oneself uh, the mind can be the friend or the enemy how's that bandhur atmatmanas tasya yena atmai vatmanajata when the mind is controlled it's the best friend and anatmanas tu anatmanas tu shatrutve varte tatmai vasatva when the mind is uncontrolled then it's the enemy so how to control this mind which is always you know like a crazy man uh by this maha mantra hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare no special tricks no just chant hari krishna hear this transcendental vibration and purify the mind and for the intelligence also because the intelligence says well listen i'm intelligent i want something we have so many books bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam to fully absorb our intelligence fully engage our intelligence is that all right okay hari krishna maharaj thank you very much for uh, your invaluable time and wonderful association uh, i wanted to ask uh, is it uh, justified if we commit sinful activities to spread krishna consciousness of course spreading krishna consciousness means it's not sinful uh, but there's no need to do anything dishonest to spread krishna consciousness no need to uh, do anything dishonest of course sometimes we do something illegal to spread krishna consciousness just as we go to countries where krishna consciousness is banned and even to talk about krishna is against the law it to spread krishna consciousness is illegal so we may sometimes transgress the law for a higher purpose uh, but the best thing is satovrate 
to be honest in one's occupation, to be yesham trantakadam papam. Uh, Krishna consciousness is possible when one has reached the end of sinful activities. So there's no need to be sinful for the service of Krishna. No? Uh, Maharaj, the thing is, I'm doing a base class and I had actually lied in my office that uh, I have to take some treatment for six months because, uh, you know, I'm not feeling well. So yeah. every Saturdays and Sundays I have to go because Sundays also we work. So it's, it's okay, no? I mean... Yeah. You're taking some treatment. No, I just lied actually to come to the base class. Which what? Base class. There's a base class. Bhakti Shastri course. Yeah. Okay. It's a Bhakti Shastri course. So for that also I'm, I've just lied that you know I've just come, I'm just, I'm just lied to the India office. So that's okay. No? Ah. To attend the Bhakti Shastri course you had to lie at the office. That's transcendental lying. That's lying for the absolute truth. But we shouldn't develop a fondness for, you know, make our whole way of life dishonest. But if sometimes we have to do something for the service of Krishna like that, that's all right. Should we take one last question? Okay. What is that last question? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, if uh, not even a blade of grass moves without Krishna's desire, then uh, is the uh, forthcoming Kali Yuga or the degradation of the, all the pious activities, Dharma, is it Krishna's desire or? Yes. Krishna, Kali Yuga is also Krishna's arrangement. Just as the prison is also the government's arrangement. And the solitary confinement, the worst part of prison, that's also the government's arrangement. So this is part of Krishna's arrangement, the prison house. But the government doesn't desire that people stay in prison. And Krishna doesn't desire that people remain stuck in the material world. So he makes Kali Yuga. It has to be there. But he also gives the Sankirtan movement. Uh, by which people can be freed from the effects of Kali Yuga. It's said that the uh, people who know the essence of things actually worship Kali Yuga. Why? Because simply by Krishna Kirtan, people can become Kalo Sankirta Keshava. They can at attain perfection by chanting the holy name of the Lord. Is that okay? But after 10,000 years, there, there will then be... Then after 10,000 years, Kirtan movement is finished. Then it's only degradation. Why? Because that's what people want. They want to be degraded. Just like some prisoners. Why are they in prison? They want to be criminals. They're offered the opportunity. We'll send you to college. The same government that's sending them to prison would more happily send them to college. But they're insisting, no, why should I go to college? Let me rob a bank. Then go to prison. The material world is here, in one sense, not because Krishna wants it, but because we want it. So the Kali Yuga couldn't go on without Krishna's sanction. But we don't have to stay. We don't have to stay to watch it. We should all get out before that time comes and Kali Yuga becomes impossible. Okay? So that's possible by simply by Kirtan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare.
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hare Hare.